welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would film an empties video. It has been quite a long time since I filmed my last one. I don't actually remember when that was, but this little green box I keep all my empties in, it's kind of filling up nicely. Now that I look at it closely, actually, there's not that much stuff in here, um, but there's enough for me to film a video. And I just thought, you know what? I want to get rid of all this stuff. So once I filmed, it's going to go straight in the bin and I'll be very, very happy. <laughs> I actually think the reason I haven't got that many empties this time around is because I've been living out of a suitcase quite a lot for the past few months. Like I went to New York in November, I've stayed at my aunt's, I've been to visit family, I've been on a spa weekend, I've just been here, there and everywhere. And when I'm living out of a suitcase, I tend to use different products to the ones that I have at home. So I may have like big bulky cleansers or palettes and stuff like that. And I try and only take the travel friendly stuff away with me. That's probably why I haven't got a lot of products, but I've got enough for a video, so let's just jump straight in. I'm not going to do this in any particular order. Once again, I'm just going to pull stuff out of the box. First up, I've got the Garnier Micellar Water. This is actually the oil-infused cleansing water. Um, this finished quite a long time ago. In fact, I also have one of the mini normal micellar waters. I love this one. I like this one too. To be honest, I couldn't really tell that much difference between the two. Yes, this one has oil in it, and I know you're supposed to shake it up so that when you apply it onto a cotton wool pad, you get a mix of the oil and the water, but either I used to forget to shake it up all the time, or I'd mostly get oil, and then once the oil ran out, I probably had about half a bottle's worth, which was just the water. And so I couldn't really see much difference in the two products, and I wouldn't rush out to buy this one specifically. I would just get either or again if it was on offer, I guess. One thing that annoys me about the travel size one is you can't refill these. I feel like this is a deja vu moment. I feel like I've said this before, but because I live out of a suitcase a lot, I tend to buy the smaller ones a lot. And you just can't unscrew this. There's just, oh, can you? No, you can't. You just can't unscrew this. You can't refill it. It's such a shame. It's just such a waste. I would much rather buy this size or the bigger size, which is now available, and just refill this rather than having to keep buying the minis. But whatever, it is what it is. <laughs> and in fact, that is the best micellar water I've ever tried. I've tried so many more, and you know what? I don't even have them anymore. I just give them away to friends and family because I just love the Garnier one, and it's my favourite. Next up, I have this Shaw Invisible Aqua deodorant. Um, I think this is a mini. Is it a mini? 150ml, so it's not like hand luggage 100 mil liquids bag friendly but it's the smaller version I think I don't quite know why I kept this but I was always a Mitchum girl I know that Mitchum I think it's the powder fresh is meant to be the best deodorant ever and I just fancied the change one day I picked up the Shaw one and do you know what it does exactly the same thing I really like this this is the blue one I'm currently using the one with the pink text on it I think I prefer the scent of that one better but it says anti-white marks yellow stains and sweat I don't really I'm not very sweaty on my armpits I don't know if I'm touching these to show you where my armpits are I'm not really a sweaty person on my armpits and I never really get yellow stains so I mean you know I don't know if that really works but I thought this was pretty good I would repurchase it in fact I have uh, but like I said this one's aqua I don't know what the pink one is but I think I prefer the scent of that one over this, even though I also like this one too. <laughs> Next up I have my all time favourite Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. I think this is the same one as my regular one. It looks a bit more metallic-y, but I never actually took the plastic off it. This must have been from Superdrug because they always coat all their makeup in plastic and it's really, really hard to remove. But this is my all time favourite mascara. Nothing else just holds a curl in my lashes. Yes, I wish it gave me a bit more volume. Yes, I wish it made my lashes a bit thicker, but I've never found one mascara that does it all. And this one is just the best thing ever. I've been through way more than I care to count of these. And in fact, I've got another one on my vanity waiting to be used because I just love it so much. <laughs> oh, speaking of mascaras, I also trialled the Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. I love the packaging of this, it's very different. I like that it's quite slim, even though it isn't slim. In comparison to this, I hate the packaging of Maybelline mascaras. I don't know why they're so wide, and then they go in at the ends, and it's just not very Instagrammable. Uh, I had a conversation with a blogger friend about this and we were just saying that like all the Maybelline mascaras that are like yellow and purple and like all these bright colors 
I just don't see many people photographing them on Instagram. So whether you use them or not, they just don't make for a very nice photo. And this one's a bit nicer. It's a bit more muted, even though it does give off some mermaid vibes, but I'm cool with that. This is what the wand looks like. This is very different. I'm not the biggest fan of a big sort of fat bristle brush. And this isn't quite like that. If you've tried the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, Everyone loves it and for me, I just wasn't blown away by it. The wand is just too, too fat and because my eyelashes are so sparse, I just found that it was just too big and it just wouldn't grip onto my eyelashes. I actually really loved the wand of this. I found that it really gripped onto my lashes nicely. It kind of gave me a bit of length, not really any volume. It didn't do anything amazing to like hold a curl in my lashes or anything like that. It was good, but then I sort of found myself using it alongside this just to get it to hold a curl and for me I don't see the point in repurchasing a high-end mascara if I'm then going to use a drugstore one just to make this one work better so yeah it was good but it wasn't that great it's also quite a dry formula I found and I tend to prefer a bit more of a wet formula in my mascara so what I did was every time I felt this one was drying out I just get some eye drops and sometimes contact lens solution depending on what I had to hand and just sort of put like three or four drops in just to loosen up the formula a little bit. I knew that I hadn't finished it for example because it's only like a month old um, but just to sort of make that formula a little bit wetter I would just do that so that's kind of a top tip there. I also have my all-time favourite NYX eyebrow gel in the shade Espresso. This isn't actually finished. This lasts for so long. I probably go through like one and a half tubes of these a year which is insane because they're only six pounds or 6.50 or 5.50 or something stupid like that. I just tend to bin them before they finish because when they sort of get towards the end of their life, the formula starts to thicken up a little bit. And with this one, I felt that it was becoming a bit too thick. So what I used to do when I was at home was put a little dot of this on the back of my hand and then get some Inglot Duraline and then just mix it in with that just to loosen up the formula. But again, when I was living out of a suitcase, I just didn't want to pack that Duraline because it's just one extra product that I don't really need. So I just thought for just over a fiver, I just bought another one and this one's good for the bin now. <laughs> Next up is the Maybelline Master Ink Eyeliner in well it's black but it's a matte eyeliner. If you remember some of my earlier videos I only ever used to wear gel liner and as much as I love it again it's not very travel friendly because it always comes in a glass pot you always need a brush to apply it when you're not at home and you're trying to do your makeup in somebody else's house or a dimly lit hotel room you don't always have good lighting you don't always have all the time in the world to play around with makeup and you just want to stick it on your face and get out the door and gel liner just isn't very practical for that so when I discovered this one and it was matte I was like yes I need to try it and you know what I love it I've already repurchased it and I really really like the felt tip end of this this one's slightly damaged now because it's been sitting here for a while but it really is black it doesn't fade throughout the day I'm just doing a few layers of this bearing in mind the nib isn't as fine as it probably would be if it was brand new but it really is the blackest of black it is matte, it lasts all day, and I find it really, really easy to wing out my eyeliner on the outer corners, and also just do like a little inner V type thing, like if you want like an Arabic sort of eyeliner look, I find this really, really easy to use, and I absolutely love it. Next we have my Holy Grail Concealer, the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Caramel. Again, I've probably been through about 7 mil million of these. This one isn't actually finished, hold Okay, this one isn't an empty. I think I've put the wrong one in the box. I have so many backups of these, it's ridiculous. But I've got a feeling that what I did was I put the wrong one in the box because I've got one sitting on my vanity that I'm pretty sure is running out. When I did my makeup this morning, I was like, oh, this is drying up quite quickly. I don't remember opening it that long ago. So yeah, this isn't actually an empty. That's so weird. Speaking of concealer, of course, I finished another Bobbi Brown corrector. This one was in the shade Deep Peach. I either use deep peach or dark peach. I tend to sort of buy one or two and keep them as backups whenever John Lewis has like a 20% off beauty sale or anywhere else really that sells Bobbi Brown. But I have had dark peach in the past. Let me just check my current one. Ah, yes, okay. So my current one is dark peach. In fact, that's almost empty. That's what this one looks like. I don't really think you'd be able to tell because this one's empty, but there's really not that much in it, to be honest. They do look slightly different in the pan, but on my eyes, they both do exactly the same thing. So I'm not that fussed about the shade, but 
If you've been following me for a while, you'll know this is my number one corrector. And this is just something that I will repurchase until the day I die, probably. The Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. I mean, can we just look at how grubby this packaging is? I haven't seen this packaging for years. This was getting really, really old. I don't think it's finished, but it was definitely time to say goodbye. Oh my God, this was before they did a brush inside it. Look at how awful this packaging is. Yes. I use this probably well after its expiry date, which I don't recommend, but it really is the best eyeshadow primer in the whole entire world. I obviously have another Urban Decay one on the go. Can you tell I'm a bit of a creature of habit? Once I find something that I love, I just stick to it. Next we have my all-time favourite Caroline Hirons and Pixie Double Cleanse. I absolutely adore this cleanser. If I could open it, that'd be great. I mean, oh God. Look at that, there's literally, I don't even if you know if you'll be able to see, there is literally nothing left inside. I scraped out every last bit with the back of my nails. This cleanser just changed my skincare game. It made me enjoy cleansing my skin at night time, taking my makeup off, and I must admit, I don't always enjoy that part of my routine. I have a whole video reviewing this cleanser. I'm actually still using this cleanser. I think I'm on my third one and I have one more backup left, which shows you just how much I love this, but it is so, so great. I recommended it to all my family, my sister, my aunt, everyone is now converted to this cleanser. It's just so, so great. If you haven't tried it, I cannot recommend this enough. Next up was a disappointing product, actually. I picked up like a Peter Thomas Roth, I think it's their Cucumber Detox range, but like a gift set in TK Maxx ages ago. And this moisturiser came with it. I was really excited to try it because it's been years since I've used like a gel moisturiser. And this is called their Bouncy Hydrating Gel. Do you know what? I could not bear the smell of this. Oh, it was just too cucumbery, unlike their mask that they do, and I can't even get this open. In fact, I didn't actually finish this, Jas did, because I just said, oh look, do you want this? It's really not for me. I can't do like really intense cucumber smells, and it's weird because I actually love their cucumber detox hydrating mask thing, and that doesn't really have a distinctive smell, but I don't have ideas. Yuck. There's a tiny bit left. Oh yeah, no, I can't do it. It's kind of green. I just didn't, I wasn't a fan of this. I, I definitely wouldn't repurchase it. I think he liked it, although just because he finished it, I don't know if that really means he liked it or not. I think he would have just finished it anyway, just because it was there. So I don't know how he feels about that, but I definitely wasn't a fan. I have this mini cleanser sample. It's by Philosophy, it's called Purity. It's their three-in-one cleanser for face and eyes. <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence about this cleanser. It took me so long to finish this. And do you know what? I actually couldn't wait till I'd finished it because I got this in my MS Beauty advent calendar about two years ago. I just kept it in my travel makeup bag, which meant that I wasn't using it regularly, literally just when I was living out of a suitcase, which I keep saying in this video. And every time I went to use it whenever I was away, I was like, oh, this is nice, but it kind of, it didn't strip my skin, but my skin did feel quite tight afterwards. It wasn't completely uncomfortable, but it was just something that I don't love. I much prefer something like this double cleanse, for example, because my skin just feels really hydrated after I use the second half. Whereas with this, it was borderline, maybe a bit drying on the skin and it didn't really remove makeup so I still had to use the micellar water first. This was more like just a face wash and even if I did love it I was just thinking that actually I would never probably buy the full size because it is massive and this 19 mil sample literally lasted me about six months and it was a bit of a struggle to get through it. It's got like a um, kind of a lemony fresh sort of scent to it which I don't hate, but I don't love either. This is another sample that I got somewhere, I think in an advent calendar. These are the Nip and Fab Exfoliate Glycolic Fix Daily Cleansing Pads. I've had the full size version of this before. I can't smell them in the pot. I loved the little pot. I think it's really great to be able to throw something like this into a travel makeup bag. The only annoying thing about this is though, that the full size pads are bigger, so they wouldn't actually fit into the pot, but it's not my favorite glycolic pad to use. I much prefer the pixie ones. I also don't love the smell of these, but they get the job done. So if I was away and I felt that my skin was on the verge of a breakout or anything like that, I would just take one of these and swipe it all over my face and go to bed and it did really work so I think if you can get past the scent of this and maybe if you're on a budget because I feel like these are probably more affordable than the pixie ones although 
I don't know because they're both meant to be drugstore brands. Pixie's obviously not that cheap. But then Nip and Fab isn't either, so they may be about the same price. But considering you can buy these in boots, I'm pretty sure they're like often on a three for two or 25% off deal somewhere. So I would recommend them. They do work. It's just the scent of it that I wasn't a big fan of. I also finished one of these mini Clarins Gentle Refiner Exfoliating Cream with Microbeads. Again, this probably went off a very long time ago. My aunt buys a lot of Clinique products and so she gets loads of minis and she's always giving them to me. She gave me this a very long time ago and while I used to love it before I discovered chemical exfoliators, I don't love it so much now, but that's probably only because I prefer using something like a glycolic acid now. This was probably okay, it wasn't anything like the St. Ives apricot scrub or anything like that. It wasn't harsh on the skin. As far as I remember, god I can't get any of this out. As far as I remember, it felt quite pleasant. It's probably not some- oh gosh, there's a tiny bit left. It's probably not something that I'd go back out and repurchase. Yeah, the beads are really fine in this actually, so it is quite a nice exfoliator. I'm not going to judge this on the smell because I do think it has gone off, but this is what it sort of looks like when you massage it in, and yeah, it is nice. I would recommend this if you prefer like a physical exfoliator. I don't know how much it retails for. This is obviously a 15ml sample, so I'm assuming that the full size one is much bigger. The next product I have is something that I absolutely adored, but it isn't finished. I think it's gone off. Oh, do you know what? It most definitely has gone off. It wasn't green when I put it in the box and now it's kind of greeny grey or it's really hard to tell. Anyway, this is the Dr. Botanicals Advanced 8 Hour Overnight Renewal Cream. I got this about two years ago and I met Dr. Botanicals at an event in Birmingham and they very kindly recommended this for my skin. And do you know what? Whenever I went to bed with this on, my skin would feel absolutely amazing the next day. I can't explain what this has in it or what it does i mean it's all vegan it's all very natural they don't have the ingredients on this actually it just says a deeply indulgent balm that works to repair revive and heal the skin so yeah essentially it's a night cream and to this day i've never found anything that makes my skin feel that amazing the only reason why i haven't repurchased this and i've never said this in a video before or on my social media because i don't quite understand the brand, Dr. Botanicals. When I first received this at the event, I went onto their website to have a look at the price and it was extortionate. It was about 70 odd pounds. And when I went on to Look Fantastic, I think it's Look Fantastic that stock it, it was like 25 pounds. So I thought that can't be right. So I emailed the brand and I said, look, I really want to review this product, but I cannot send people to your website. I'm not sure if you're aware, maybe it's a typo, but there's a huge price difference on your website compared to Look Fantastic. And I thought maybe they just didn't know. It, it could be a genuine mistake. Um, I looked at other products and it seemed to be like the same thing for every single other product. And they got back to me saying, yeah, we're aware of this, but we'll give your followers like a 70% off code or a 50% off. I don't really remember, this was two years ago. And I was like, but if people don't use a code, they're gonna spend like 70 quid on a product that's worth like 25, 30 quid. Why would I let somebody do that? But because of that, I've just never really reviewed this product and there's just something about the brand that doesn't quite sit right with me. So although I absolutely love this product, it's just not something that I would say go out and buy. Like I. I would love to be able to repurchase this. I mean, I, I easily could, obviously, off look fantastic. But it's just not... I just don't feel quite right supporting a brand that seem a little bit shady, if you know what I mean. But that is such a great product. And if you don't care about the brand, which is fine, you can do whatever you want, then I do recommend that product. It is great. <laughs> Having said all that, I have another Dr. Botanicals empty here. This is their advanced... Re Revita Boost Eye Therapy Eye Cream. I absolutely loved this as well. I think I got three products in total. These two and a moisturiser. The moisturiser I wasn't a fan of. In fact, I don't even know where that is. But this was really, really good. I've almost finished it, if you can see. And I could probably get one more use out of it if I stick my nail in there. But this was a really, really nice eye cream. I tend to find that with eye creams, you can't always see any visible difference even when you finish a pot. I feel like you probably have to use the same thing for at least a year or more to see any sort of noticeable difference in terms of dark circles or fine lines or anything like that and as a blogger I can't really do that but I really like this. It was very hydrating without being too greasy. It provided a really nice base for corrector and concealer um, application and it was a really good eye cream. I'm just sad that it's a brand that I'm not too sure how I feel about. And my very last thing ever is a sheet mask. God, 
I did this sheet mask back in the summer, which means I haven't filmed an empties video since before then. If you watch my vlogs, you'll probably have seen me doing this on camera and seen me raving about it, as well as looking ridiculous. But this is the Declior Orabsolu sheet mask. I know that I'm completely butchering the name of this, but I have to say, this is probably the priciest sheet mask I have ever tried, that I've ever had, but it's also the best one I've ever used. I don't love sheet masks. I love the whole convenience of them, throwing them into a makeup bag, doing them in a hotel room, doing them on holiday, even on a flight, depending on who you're sat next to. So I do love that they're very functional, but at home, I'm just not the biggest fan of sheet masks. Maybe if my skin was a bit drier or it needed like a boost of hydration, that's when I'd probably do it. But there was just something about this mask. First of all, it was such good quality. It fit really well. It didn't slide off my face. Of course, I looked ridiculous. Like you always look ridiculous in a sheet mask, but the fit of it was really good. In fact, I've just remembered, it comes in two halves, which is genius because you have your top half and your bottom half so they're not trying to assume that like one size fits every face and you know you end up with the eye holes here and the nose hole down there and the mouth is kind of lost somewhere along your chest so I really really liked that about this one but also the actual liquidy part didn't drip down my face it wasn't in my hair it wasn't really that messy it's kind of a thicker formula and once I took it off my skin was glowy just like that and i was like oh my god so yes it is pricey um i think it's about nine or twelve pounds if i remember correctly but i mean i'd buy it again it is so good in fact i need to add this to my list on my phone of stuff that i do want to repurchase because that is a great mask highly recommend that <laughs> but yeah so that is the end of my empties video i really hope you found it helpful in some way i've tried to not include all the usual products that appear every time I film one of these videos, like my hair products and yeah, kind of these two. Um, I'll bear that in mind for next time. But I hope you found it helpful. I hope you enjoyed these mini reviews. If there are two products I would tell somebody to rush out and buy right now, it would be these two. There is no better cleanser that I've ever tried than this. And there's no better sheet mask that I've ever tried than this one. And in terms of makeup, the concealer, the mascara, the Bobbi Brown corrector, the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion, and the NYX eyebrow gel thing. They're all my favorites. That's why I finished them. <laughs> but I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, then please give it a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I know I say it every single time, but it would really, really help me out if you did. Leave me a comment down below letting me know if you've tried any of these products before and what you thought of them. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.